morning, YouTube. Hey, I'm here today. I'm going to pick these tepid peppers here today. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, I use this uh, blueberry picker that I picked up off of Amazon. I love it. Uh, it kind of makes short work out of it because these are very small peppers and there's lots and lots of them. I uh, planted these, most of these, all this past spring. They should have done been established and, and set to where they would they would come back year to year. But uh, my neighbor's dog dug them up last, uh, not this past summer, but the last summer. And uh, we had quite a bit around about that. But anyway, I'm going to pick these peppers today and we'll see how many we get. Uh, last year, I got right at a quart bag off of about six plants. I got quite a few more plants in there. I got a pretty good hedge growing alongside this bus here, and uh, maybe we can take care of that. All right, so that's where we're at, and that's what we're going to do. And then I'll give you uh, a quick uh, shot at my, my onions are coming up, my rutabagas are coming up, my kohlrabi's coming up, the cabbage is coming up. So uh, we're getting ready, hopefully, to uh, have a pretty garden this winter. All right. Hey, we'll see you on the flip flop. Decided after I got through picking my tepping peppers, I'd pick a few tomatoes that are just they're just running wild. After last year's harvest, I just let them go, and uh, they never did bloom again because of the, the weather. The weather was too hot and too dry. Even though I was watering, I did, I got a few tomatoes off of it every once in a while. But I had planted some uh, uh, stars and. Uh, Mooning stars, that's it, mooning stars, watermelons, late in the season. I thought with all the kids coming by here and everything, I'd uh, have some ripe watermelons this fall to give to kids and and, uh, and whenever they come over to visit and things, we can have fresh watermelons. Well, uh, I didn't get it ripe till late and uh, I thought I had picked one that was ripe. I stuck a knife in it and it split apart and uh, solid white on the inside, so I just let them go. Well, this melon here fell off a vine over there whenever I was picking the water, uh, the tomatoes, because they grew up in the tomatoes, and then the tomatoes grew back into the to the watermelon vines. And uh, I picked these few tomatoes. I'll chop them up and have some fried green tomatoes out of them, and, and I'll have some of these. I might eat one of them here in just a moment. Oh, I see a bad one there. It's got a bad bruise on it. We'll toss it out there for the birds to eat. But I'm gonna start here with these tipping peppers. I put these in uh, all my pickle products. They put an absolute delicious flavor in the pickles. They're not too hot. They're not too, they're, they're just right. So, uh, little kids that ain't used to eating anything that's warm will say they're hot. But I mean, you eat that pepper now, it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot, uh, but my kids they grew up eating stuff that was kind of warm. And uh, one day, me and my uncle was standing beside a big old bush that my dad had over there, and uh, we were talking about stuff. And he turned around, he'd seen that pepper bush. He says, "Ooh, them son of a guns there are hot." He says, "They're hot. You can't eat them things. They're so hot." It wasn't 15, 20 seconds later, my son Sam, he was about that tall, walked up there and snatched one of them off that bush, a red one, and put it in his mouth and chewed it up. No water, no nothing, and he just goes, ah, like that right there, and then grabbed him another one. 
And my uncle says, well, that boy, there's something wrong with him. Well, no, he was raised eating hot stuff. But I'm going to try one of them now. I compare them. They're just full of seed. Pretty hot. Get you in the roof of your mouth, your tongue. It's hot. It's got a delayed effect. It's very hot. It's like eating a lit match. Yes, sir. I think I'm gonna have me a tomato to quell that that heat. Nothing like it. Now, for some reason or another, oh man, oh, it's absolutely delicious. These were supposed to be celebrity tomatoes. But once they started putting on fruit, I realized that my seeds are in a bad spot. My seed tomatoes from last year must have got crossed. It was like eating salsa. Oh, that's good. My seeds, my, my tomatoes must have got cross-pollinated and I saved my heirloom seed. Mm. Damn. They didn't get no bigger than this right here. Well, I had a few that was like this. You know. But, uh, whew, it's hot. It's still hot. They have an excellent flavor. But I still manage to harvest about 200, 250 pounds of tomatoes, good tomatoes. Good sized tomatoes, that size or bigger. And uh, it's hot. <laughs> it's very hot. I mean, just one little bitty pepper. It's hot. Like, I mean, but once you get it in that pickle, uh, you get a couple of them in that in that jar with them pickles. The pickles take on the flavor. They're not because you don't bust the, the pepper to put it in there. You just let them leach their their uh, their their oils and stuff into the into the uh, the mixture, and it, it's, it's, it makes an excellent pickle. It, it really does. Uh, I got probably a gallon, no, about a half a gallon, maybe, maybe a good quart bag, a good quart bag full after I pick all the leaves out of them. I tried to get all the leaves out of my cook. But uh, you see that a little pepper, pepper picker is this is awesome. I mean, I don't know how long it took me, an hour, two hours maybe. I don't know. I hadn't uh, looked at the watch. But uh, you just comb it through there and the pepper grabs on the inside of there and it picks it for you. Now, the uh, peppers are pretty strong when they're green. When they're red, they just fall off of them. So, you know, the red ones come off real easy. The green ones, they stay connected. And uh, they will turn red with time if you leave them alone. I don't. Whether they're green or red, they're still hot. They still got the same flavor. Uh, so you have to go through there and pick the leaves off the ones that didn't didn't go on there. The stems, I leave them on there. I leave them on there whenever I pickle with them. 
That way somebody got something to grab a hold to, you know, uh, if they want to eat it. This, I guess this is an acorn squash. It's some kind of squash that I grew last year. I guess it's good. I don't know. I picked it, put it up there on that rack. It sit there all summer. It hasn't spoiled. Another one that I had there, it rotted. And all the seed fell through that mesh. That's my cleaning, uh, my vegetable cleaning stand. I start them out here. And I put them over there to, I, you know, I wash them in a bucket right here. And then I'll set them over there and they'll drip dry. And then I take them in the house. But um, there's a whole bunch of seed down there. I'm going to check them out and see if they're any good. If they're any good, I'll grow them next year. I'll try them. We'll find a place to try that pepper I can still feel the heat off of it uh, this watermelon I ain't washed it maybe I ought to brush it off because I'm not going to carry it inside if it's any good I don't know if it's good or not let's find out nobody's here to cook me dinner I don't feel like cooking for myself today Linda is an excellent cook. She's one of the finest cooks in this part of the country. It's one of the reasons I married her. She's an awesome woman. And uh, no, I'm not leaving her for nothing. There ain't no, no, nothing in this world calls me ever think twice about the love in that one. Let's see what it does when I stick it. Properly cut the watermelon. I'm probably gonna mess up. But you should. There we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Can you see that? Oh, my. Oh, my. Laura, wish she was here. Oh, Grandpa's gonna get the heart right straight out of that watermelon. Mm -mm -mm. I hope it's as good as it looks. Mm. Not quite as sweet. It was raised during the fall. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's excellent. Mm. That takes the heat right plumb out of that pepper. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm crazy about watermelon. I love watermelon. During the hot summertime, we'd be working out on the building or something used to build uh, metal buildings, big, large metal buildings, barn. You go by a store at lunchtime. Mm. Oh, I firmly suggest that you get some of these uh, Moon and Stars watermelons seed and grow them for yourself they're good they're excellent they're pretty to grow these i already did anything to them i, I watered them a little bit fertilized them a little bit not much uh, just let them grow out there basically just to cover my garden so a whole bunch of weeds didn't take over mm. Mm. but to get back to my story you know, you sit down at lunch, be too hot to eat a sandwich or anything, just cut a big watermelon, a big giant watermelon and open it and sit there and eat it. You don't have to worry about cramps. Or...
excellent way to hydrate your body. Mm. Oh my. I'm about to get to chill. That watermelon's just sitting outside. It's cold enough. Mm. That is excellent. I am so happy with this. I have been carrying this potato blade for the best part of 15 years. My sons buy me new knives all the time. I like this, this old stag handled case knife. It's a double X case, a trapper bottle. I just love it. And, uh, I've lost it a time or two and found it. But if you don't watch me, I get inside a steakhouse or somewhere. They bring out the knives, the more dull knives. I don't care what kind of steaks they got. They ain't tender enough to cut them with those knives you'll find in a steakhouse. I'll whoop that puppy out right there. Stay sharp. Anyway, I guess you can garden late in the season here in Texas. I used to never. Garden during the fall. I just did what I could during the springtime and let my, my garden go. Just clean it up and let it go until the next year. But, uh, over the past couple of years, I've learned that I really enjoy fall and winter gardening more than I do spring and summer gardening. And it's for the simple fact that it's not as hard to take care of. You get good, honest, solid meals out of them. And uh, you, you just don't have as much work involved in it. Bust up the soil at the right time of the year and, and get it going and, and uh, plant your seed, water it, and it comes up and you just let it deal with the, with the weather and uh, let it go. And eventually the weather will get right on it. Uh-oh, chicken's gonna get right there. Anyhow, that's all I got for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Hit the like button. Ring the bell. And subscribe. Don't forget that we're giving away that, that little Tox ATV. And uh, the way it's going, it don't look like we're going to give it away this, this year for Christmas. It sure would be a shame for a, a little child not to get one for Christmas that could have gotten one, you know. All it takes is your watch and your like and your ringing the bell. Oh, excuse me. Good, Good watermelon. Mooney Stars watermelon. Some good old tepid peppers and tomatoes right straight out of the garden. This second week of November. Hey, have a good day.